Hello, and today we're going to be talking about mutual funds. In a mutual fund, what happens is a bunch of people put their money together and create a pool of money, and then someone goes and invests that money, and everyone has a share in all of the investments. There's lots of benefits or advantages of mutual funds. You get instant diversification. In one purchase, you may own thousands of different assets. You have lower transaction costs. Uh, it improves liquidity. You can buy and sell illiquid assets very easily. You have divisibility, so you can invest $1.37 if you want to in some cases. Better record keeping, especially if I'm doing it. Uh, I'm pretty poor at record keeping. Here you get it professionally done. Professional management, which may or may not be a good thing. And marketing. While marketing is often seen as an expense, I think it does help us to remind ourselves that we should be investing. Uh, and clearly the benefit here, one of the overall things, this diversification is the driving force of all of it. Mutual funds can be confusing sometimes because there are so many different ways of classifying them. There really are, and this is not an exhaustive list, this is just off the top of my head quickly. We can classify them by type of assets. For example, there are stock funds, as the name suggests, they invest in stocks. There are bond funds that invest in fixed income securities. Uh, well, actually, bond funds is an example of a fixed income fund. There are blended funds where you have some of both, diversified. Uh, there are another way to classify them is by geography. You have regional funds, you know, Latin American fund, European fund, Southeast Asian fund, whatever. You have international funds that can invest anywhere outside of their home country. You have global funds that can invest anywhere, and you have domestic firms that just invest in the home country. By investment style is another way of classifying funds. You have growth funds, you have income funds, you have value funds, you have value, uh, blend funds, and you have value funds. By investment goals, again, growth and income fall into both, preservation of capital, and speculative funds that are just trying to, you know, more or less rolling the dice for a big investment, big return. By level of diversification, there are what we call sector funds. Sector funds invest in a certain area, you know, for example, tech stocks or something along those lines. You have diversified funds that can invest in any area that they want. Uh, by management philosophy is another. Uh, this is a big one we talk about a lot in class. You have actively managed funds, which try to go out and actively beat the market by picking securities. You also have passive investment funds that what they do is just try to tie the market. Uh, index funds clearly fall into this category. They have much lower fees, but they also have, um, you're not going to beat the market on a general basis. Overall, they do very well long term only. You also have another breakdown by type of fund. The two main categories here, we have open-ended funds and closed-ended funds. Open-ended funds are more popular. Over 95% of funds are open-ended funds. Open-ended funds, what you do is if you want to buy or sell new securities, you are buying them through the mutual fund family. Uh, for example, if you go to Vanguard or Fidelity and you can buy into an open-ended fund, you buy, the number of shares outstanding constantly changes. In a closed-end fund, closed-end funds, are the number of shares is fixed and they go through a process just like an IPO or a seasoned equity offering where if they want to change the number of shares they have to go and reissue new securities just like in the secondary market. Closed end funds may or may not sell at net asset value, in fact more often than not they sell at a discount. That discount is something we could talk about at a later date but it does fluctuate with the, the overall state of the economy, the mood of the investors, etc. And most of them do trade at a discount. Some trade at a premium, but it's very rare. What to look for in mutual funds? Clearly, people often look for past performance. And while past performance is good, past performance doesn't necessarily predict the future. And oftentimes, there's a saying, hot hands cool off. Uh, and that's because a lot of, especially if we're looking at sector funds, one sector is really hot for one period. And the, the funds that are invested in that sector do very well, but then they do very poorly in the next. One of the things you really want to look for is expenses. Expense ratios absolutely eat up your portfolio in the long run. Uh, we'll do another presentation here in a few minutes that looks at that and looks at the enormous difference over time um, if you are actively managed versus passively managed. I won't make any investment advice, but I will tell you that most of my money is invested passively and in the lowest expense ratios I can find. Low, passive investing also has an advantage in that they often are fewer tax consequences because by not actively selling in securities and buying securities all the time, they don't recognize as many capital gains and therefore it's a good way to lower taxes. 
And that's it for this introduction to mutual funds.